In this demo, I'm going to walk you through Assistance API, which is a new addition to OpenAI list of APIs. Now, Assistant API actually allows developers to build AI assistants within their own application. And the Assistance API offers three different type of tools, code interpreter, retrieval and code function, and function calling. My focus for today's video is going to be the code interpreter. What it does fundamentally is that it allows the Assistant API to write down the Python code on the fly and execute that in a sandbox environment to solve the given problem. And it does so in a way that it writes out the code, it executes, if it fails, it tries to recover that error and it keeps on doing it. Either it has to ask for that user input or it succeeds. And so we'll go ahead and start fiddling with the tool. I'm in the assistant. I'm gonna to go to open a playground and start creating my first assistant. Now, before we do that, I'm going to go to the usage page and that is something you can access from here. And in the usage page, let me just highlight. I want to make a case that what is the current number of dollar value that I've consumed. So 13.81. So I'll just go ahead and record it as part of the execution. And we are going to look at how much dollar values consume after the execution. And the case that I'm trying to put up is we're going to create a virtual AI assistant, which is a data scientist. We're going to give it a task. It will try to solve it and we are going to we are going to evaluate whether the same task when executed by a human would it take more or less time and what would be the dollar value associated with that. So let's go ahead and create a data scientist. I'm calling it this assistant, the data AI assistant and the instruction it, that I'm going to give you are as follows. You are a data scientist whose job is to analyze the provided data and fetch the required information from it. Let's go ahead and fix the spelling. And the model behind the scene, I'm gonna make use of GPT review model. And as you can see, these are the three tools. I'm gonna to select code interpreter. Now at this point of time, I need some data to provide to data scientist of what it is just going to solve. And by the way, we can always provide that data later on during execution from the link over here. I'm gonna to go to the World Bank data, which is an open data format available. We'll go to indicators or by country. And over here, we can see there are, there's a lot of different sorts of data. I see on the top there is agricultural land data. So we'll just go ahead and find it and download it. So over here, I'm going to click on CSV. And that is the sort of an assignment that you would want your data scientist to work at. So we'll go back and we'll provide this file as an input file to this data scientist now this file generally contains as we can see from here it contains the agriculture land data but let's go ahead and ask a query and let's make a query which an actual data scientist would solve Now that's the sort of task that you would give a data scientist. It's executed. This tool would try to solve for this. And as we can see, to create the graph of data, we need to start by examining the content of the provider file. And for that purpose, it's gonna make a call. This is a method call which has been made for to the Python in which it's gonna try to guess what is the file format. The first thing it does, and rightly so, is to identify the zip archive. The second it's gonna do is to unzip the file. This is the second step or the second method call. And it's successfully able to parse it. And as it seems like there are three different CSV files, now it will try to load that data and try to make sense out of it, just like a human data scientist would do. The file indeed is a CSV file format uh, and it has identified one of the files over here for which it classifies to contain the required data. So this is the particular one it is examining. Now it's making use of some of the libraries and tries to load the data, comes across an error. It finds out that the data for the year 2023 is not available in the CSV file. So it's adjusting the range from 2010 to 2022, just like a human would do. So it's going to exclude that data. It seems like the code the AI assistant wrote down the code and in writing down the code, it made a mistake of not finding out or importing the right library. It's going to import that right library. 
and right there we have the data from 2020 10 to 2022 exactly how we asked for orange and blue color so that's something interesting so let's go ahead and extract the zip file and inside the zip file we see that there are three csv files which pretty much would contain the data but neither of these files contain the data which is relative to the location of where the country resides and you'll understand it in a bit of a moment so there is information about for the years for the particular countries but not where the countries actually belong to and that is true for other files as well now let me ask it draw the graph of pakistan again my home country compared to other countries in south east asia now this would be an interesting question to ask because this information of which countries reside in southeast asia is not known in as for these files but since we are making use of gpt model behind the scene which already should contain this information it should be able to furnish that response to us let's execute it now the first thing that it does so is i believe it identifies the the country which are part of southeast asia by the way being correct is not that important right now but rather the execution which has been done and this this is remarkable what this tool is able to do and as we can see this is the agricultural land data of multiple countries along with pakistan being rendered now let's get back to the usage page and refresh it again and what we see is 13.86 is the new value so during the entire execution we have apparently consumed only a partial um, of the dollar value so we'll just input that and as we can see the total execution for this exercise was 0 0.05 dollar and imagine a developer has to do the same job i'm pretty sure this is going to cost much higher so at this point of time i want to give rise to the notion that virtual teams are coming very soon we just need somebody who is very good in terms of breadth of knowledge and they are able to delegate a lot of different tasks they are able to create a lot of different assistants and they are at your disposal another point remarkable point here is that this assistant this virtual assistant is available to us 24 by 7 it doesn't have to go through emotional episodes or personal or work-life balance this is the finest ai implementation that i have seen so far hope you like it thank you